It's my pleasure and privilege again to give you a very warm welcome from the linked charges of St. Michael's Dallas, Rafford Parish Church and St. Leonard's in Forest. I hope you have a blessed time together. Our first hymn today is from CH4 and it's 137, All Things, All Things Bright and Beautiful, All Creatures Great and Small. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you once again for this opportunity to share something of you today. We know by your promise that you are with us, and we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Listen to the words which God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice which began creation. Listen, even if you don't understand. Amen. Our first reading today is very easy to find in the Bible. I know some of the books in the Bible are quite easy, quite difficult to, to come across. Uh, but today it is in Genesis, and it's in Genesis chapter 1, so it couldn't really be any easier to, any easier to find. So we're reading from Genesis chapter 1, the whole of the chapter, and into chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was morning, and there was evening, the first day. 
And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate the water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God, God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground the land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And it was evening and it was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark the seasons and days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the waters and the seas, and the birds increase in the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock and over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit in the seeds in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and to the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground, Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. In the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. We read these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Our next hymn is from CH4, and it's hymn number 147. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing hallelujah.
93 million miles from the blistering surface of the sun hangs the planet Earth, a rotating sphere perfectly suspended in the center of the universe, the ultimate creation from an infinite mind, an unbelievably intricate, complex design, a supernatural testimony, an irrefutable sign that there is a God. The size, position, and angle of the Earth is a scientific phenomenon to see, a few degrees closer to the sun and we disintegrate. A few degrees further and we'd freeze. The axis of the earth is tilted at a perfect 23 degree angle and it's no mistake that it is. As this allows equal global distribution of the rays of the sun, making it possible for the food chain to exist. Or take, for example, the combination of nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere we breathe every day. It just happens to be the exact mix that life needs to prosper. It doesn't happen on any other planet that way. You see, the Bible says the invisible things of God are clearly seen through his creation. To believe this is not hard. If there is a design, there is a designer. If there's a plan, there's a planner. And if there's a miracle, there is a God. The scripture says the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. If we allow our minds to drink in all the truth that just surrounds us, creation itself will help us understand. Did you know the moon controls the tides? It's the maid that cleans the ocean. Even the waves don't crash the shores in vain. The tides drag, drag impurities into the depths of the sea. It's nature's constant recycling chain. It simply boggles the mind to think that the stars will rotate with such an exact precision that it's true that the atomic clock with an error factor of less than three seconds per millennium is set by the way they move. Though they silently orbit the sun, the moon, the stars, are like celestial evangelists above, who circle the earth every 24 hours, shouting in every language that there is a God. Atheism is the wedge on the foundation of our faith, trying to topple our relationship with Christ. When the fool said in his heart there is no God, he rejects the truth God painted on the canvas of the night. Atheism has never created an artistic masterpiece, has never healed a fatal disease or calmed a fear. Atheism has never still given answers to our existence, peace to a troubled mind, or even dried a tear. For it's God who created the heaven and the earth and flung the stars in space and breathed in a handful of dirt and it became a man. It's God who sits in the circle of the earth and measures the mountains in a scale and holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. It's God who sent his only begotten son to the cross of Calvary to save our souls from hell and grave. It's God who creates, it's God who delivers, and it's God who heals, and it's God who is worthy of a thunderous ovation of praise. There is a hope, there is a light, there is an answer to all answers. There is a flame that burns in the night. And I know, yes, I know, there is a God. Now for our prayer of intercession and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, you hold the depths of the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide our light inside ourselves. Renew us a sense of joy. Painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and your salvation. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkness, darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. God of power and might, your broken world cries out from the depths. A world dominated by the darkness of war terror, pain, and suffering. We, sh we share the pain and anguish of those who have had to flee from their homes, countries, and livelihoods, who risk their lives desperate for a new start, free from fear and war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth of your promise. 
that shall not be overcome by the dark shadows of life or the darkness of human nature. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people in a dark place today. We have in our hearts the friends and loved ones of the victims of violence and hatred. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. Let your light shine through the darkness of all pain and suffering in our world today. God of life, we ask for your healing power for those who are enduring pain and illness. We share the grief of people close to us who recently lost loved ones. We remember that as we weep with the grieving. We know your everlasting light shines with us in moments of great sadness and great joy. God of love and hope, renew in us a deeper sense of who we are in you. Help us to be aware of your presence each day and every day. Make us instruments of love and praise. May your words, actions, and lives be living examples. May your forgiving, healing, life-giving love be with us all. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that the Lord gave us, that gave us as first disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's read together Psalm 19. Reading again from the New International Version. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out unto all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from the pavilion, like a champion rejoicing run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes a circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. Warned in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servants also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent, of great transgression. Praise God and bless the reading from his holy word. Our next hymn is hymn number 154 from CH4 and it's O Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all thy hands have made.
heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims the work of his hands. This is one of the clearest biblical statements that nature itself is meant to show the greatness of God. These words are in the present tense, that is, the heavens are declaring and the sky is proclaiming the creative work of God. It's a continual display. What we see in nature is meant to constantly show us that God exists. Because the heavens declare the glory of God, we can be confident in using science to explore. The more we know about the world around us, the more we give, or should give, the glory to God. The more we discover, the more evidence we have that he is the one responsible for the whole nature and its laws. When God wanted to create fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he turned to himself. Then God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. If you take a fish out of the water, it will die. And when you remove a tree from the soil, it will also die. Likewise, when man is disconnected from God, he dies. God is our natural environment. We are created to live in his presence. We have to be connected to him because it is only in him that life exists. Let us stay connected to God. Our time together has once more come to an end. My prayer is, as always, that some thoughts verse from one of the hymns we shared today, or perhaps some of the poem we shared brings you closer to the Lord. No matter how close we are to him, we can always get closer. So now praise God, the sole source of life and birth. Praise God, the word who came to earth. Praise God, the Spirit's holy flame. All glory and honor to his name, now and forever. Amen.